Morning. It is Monday, August 3rd, 2020. My name is Justin. I'm with the Independence Missouri Emergency Operations Center, and I am the Storm Spotter team lead here to bring you a quick tutorial on some of the features of Radar Scope. First and foremost, when you open the app, in order to navigate around, you can just put your finger on the screen and drag around with one finger to move the map. Or you can pinch zoom in and pinch zoom out to get a better view of what you're trying to find. The tools across the bottom going from left to right is the location service to pinpoint where you're at, which the first time you do this, you'll probably need to enable the app to access your GPS. There's the radar picker tool, which depending on which version you have, you may see some of these, you may not see some of these, but um, these are the radar designations that you can click on and open up those radar locations. There's also the option to play, um, which will loop together the most recent radar images and provide you a video loop playback. You can also stop that at any time. And a tip that a lot of people don't realize is you can long press on that same play button and create a slider where you're able to slide left and right to speed up or slow down that animation. When you're done with that, you can just click anywhere else on the screen to get back to your regular menu. Um, also, depending on the version that you have, you may have the screen split option to be able to split your view into two different views and then tap the same button to go back. There's the share button, which option, the options are save screenshot, share screenshot, submit mping report, and submit spotter report. Screenshot is pretty self-explanatory. Um, share screenshot will flash your screen and give you options to send it to different either uh, people or applications so like if you wanted to share out to Twitter or Facebook um, or send an SMS text to your friends uh, or for us we can also send that to Slack or Voxer. Uh, lastly there is the tool where if you long press you can access the different options again this may be different based on the version of radar scope that you have but the drawing tool is helpful to show you know a storm might be moving in a certain direction uh, to show like a frontal boundary. There's a lot of options that I've used that for. Um, there's the distance tool, which will, since we're in the Springfield radar, give us a point there on the Springfield radar. And say if we wanted to know how far it was out to that storm, we can see, oh, okay, well, it's 83.5 miles and the beam height out that far is 7.3 thousand feet, which is important to know when you're looking at radar. Then we have all the options which are accessed in the top left menu, uh, where you can see all the different radars and locations available to you. Uh, locations are something you can set as well as your favorite radar. If you want to pick a favorite radar, let's go back to the main screen and we'll go back to KEAX is the radar site that we're looking at for data. I can go to radars and locations and from here I can click the plus button and since I've already got KEAX added it's already in my list but this is where I can go and pick those other ones for use. Locations you can also add uh, again, by clicking the plus button and typing in an address, an area code, um, the broader that you uh, submit an option, it's going to just put a, a dot in the middle of that. So if you pick the county, it's just going to put a dot in the middle of that county. Uh, whereas for this instance, I selected the EOC itself. So if I go back into that top left menu and I enable the locations option, you can now see here on my screen, it shows me exactly where 
the EOC is located based on the address. Which is also helpful for if you are again using the distance tool, now we can begin a distance search off of that location. There are other options in here, such as warnings that you can enable or disable, watches, which you can again enable or disable, as well as different reports. Uh, you can view MPing reports, storm reports, and spotter reports. We don't currently have any in our area, but if we zoom out up to Chicago, I know they had a water spout notification today. So these little round dots are those types of notifications. You can click on those to get the brief information or the I next to it to get the full details. There's also polygons, which you should probably be familiar with most other weather apps. You can click anywhere within the polygon to see what that is, when it expires, and then again click the I for the full detailed information. Uh, lastly, there are storm tracks, which is one of the options over here in the left. So if you were to click on one of these and zoom in, you can see when this cell was designated by radar, as well as the rough estimate of where that is tracking by time. There are a few other options over here where you can again enable or disable your locations. Uh, you can turn on and off mesoscale discussions. Uh, you can turn on and off spotter locations. You can even turn off cities and highways if you wanted a cleaner view here. So say if we just wanted a map view, but we didn't want everything being cluttered up with the highways, we can turn that off and simply see county outlines and city out or, and uh, city names. Uh, some also op offer a contour, which can be a hail size, hail probability, or azimuthal view. Uh, I usually leave that off. Uh, but for the outlooks, I will typically set that to categorical, which when you zoom out on the national view here, you can see those convective outlook zones. So you've got non-severe, you've got marginal, We've got a slight risk out here over on the East Coast between Virginia Beach and Charleston. And once you've got everything set up and configured, then you can begin to use Radar Scope to better track weather information and know where you are at in relation to that. Thanks for joining me today.